What's up everyone, this is Ryan here and you are watching episode 26 of my Android developer live Q&A. <clears throat> so uh, we've got a fun episode planned. Uh, let's just get the uh, uh, sales pitch out of the way first and then we'll get into the interesting stuff. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank the following people for supporting me on Patreon. So that is Seth Keegan, Trevor Halvorsen, Basam Halal, Tina Fredericks, Nanotech, Shadow, Mr. Bidwell, Graham Herseg, Sushil Chanda, and Alad Stavi. So to those people, thank you very much. And I have kind of a really cool announcement. Well, it's really cool for me and I'm very excited about it. So um, I finally get to say now, uh, if you like what I do uh, and you'd like to support it and Patreon's not really your thing and you maybe still want to get something back for uh, supporting me, then uh, I've put together basically a roadmap or guide for beginner Android developers and uh, the link will be down in the description box below and the little ebook is called A Dropouts Guide to Designing and Building Android Applications, I think it's called. Yeah, I gave it a long ass name there. Uh, so anyways, yeah, um, if you would like basically an overview, um, if you're a beginner or anywhere between beginner and intermediate, basically what I've done is I've created a book which is sort of meant to be read at varying levels sort of along the path. But it gets you started just with like the general Java stuff. I will be doing a Kotlin edition talking about the basics of Android development. And then I get into more advanced topics like asynchronous communication, uh, software architectures, uh, abstraction. And I kind of just sprinkle in all kinds of useful tidbits for design. So. Uh, yeah, uh, consider picking up a copy. The link is just down in the description box below. And that is my commercial. Uh, so today's episode is brought to you by Patreon and also me. I pay the bills. <laughs> All right, so let's get started here. Uh, it is unfortunately a very drab and dreary day outside, so uh, the lighting's not the best in here. But let's get started anyway. So uh, what we're going to do, oh, uh, one more announcement. So, um, and this ties into what we're going to do next. So um, one thing which uh, I've been quite, um, uh, one thing which I've been wanting to do for quite some time now is to sort of, oh, there's my phone going off, is to sort of uh, increase the, um, shut up phone, sort of increase the uh, community engagement um, within WiseAS. So there is a Slack channel that uh, we run. So uh, if you'd like to join that, there's an uh, invite link in the description box below. And uh, so basically it's just a place where you can come hang out, ask questions. And uh, really my main requirements is uh, there's zero tolerance for sort of personal disrespect. Um, if you wanna you know, debate things heavily, that's fine, but nothing should ever be personal. And uh, yeah, it's open to all levels of developers. If you're a beginner, head down there, ask questions. Uh, if you're more, we do have a couple more advanced de developers, which is uh, sort of a good segue into today. So today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at someone else's code. And just give me one moment here to get things pulled up. All right. Awesome. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, before I continue, um, let's see here. Sorry, this is something I could have set up a moment ago, but I was busy staring at code for the past hour. Okay, so um, what we're gonna be doing today is we are going to look at a very interesting way of implementing a recycler view and the adapter and sort of all the things that uh, go around building a recycler view properly. Now, there's a couple of things. Um, for starters, uh, this code that we're gonna be looking at uh, is written in Kotlin. It's quite advanced. Uh, there is sort of bits of Rx Java magic in there and things like that. So. We're gonna kind of go over it and if you're, what I'm trying to say is if you're a beginner or intermediate and it looks quite complicated, absolutely check it out and keep looking at it until you understand it. And I'll have the uh, links to uh, the proper repositories and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it is kind of an advanced sample. So we're gonna be 
kind of going through here. So this code is provided by uh, my friend, Dara Bitsi. And uh, if you would like to get a hold of him, oh no, it's gonna do that thing again. Why is the screen black? Uh, there we go. Okay. So uh, if you'd like to get a hold of Dural, then uh, he has uh, GitHub available at uh, uh, this link here. And then Twitter should be uh, at Daryl Dural Bitsy. And uh, let's see here. So the code that we're going to be looking at is at, uh, where's the location? Is uh, just provided by Dural. So I'm just going to go to the chat. All right, so this is the code that we're going to be looking at. I just pasted a link in the comments. So if you would like to sort of follow along, then you can do that. Otherwise, I will, of course, have the code open. And we're just going to kind of go over it and uh, talk about Model View Presenter and uh, sort of uh, division of responsibilities and all the usual good stuff we like to babble about. And so let's get started here. So what I wanted to intro with is uh, we're going to start by looking really quickly at uh, a simpler implementation. Um, and we're going to see sort of, we're going to talk about Model View Presenter and how all of these things kind of relate together. So first and foremost, um, the first code we'll be looking at isn't actually from uh, Dereau's repository. But in this case, I wanted to show you a different way to implement the recycler view. Now, the thing about this particular method is that it doesn't really follow separation of concerns super well. And we'll see what I mean. So, um, but before we get to that, I just wanted to really quickly mention what model view presenter is. Uh, so when we're talking model view presenter, what I mean is uh, it's basically a specific sort of subset, which actually gets divided into another sub two types of model view presenter, but blah, blah, blah. It's one specific subset of what I like to call three layer architectures. So three layer architectures, especially on mobile development, I would hazard a guess are the most common thing that you'll see. So we're talking model view controller, model view presenter, model view view model. Now, of course, architectures don't need to be three layers, but generally that's a good sort of way of thinking about things. Now, before I get into the recycler view code, let's just talk really briefly about why we do, what is model view presenter and why we do three layers. So um, to begin with, uh, this first code example is gonna be available as the recycler view tutorial 2017 repository in the description box. And I'm gonna open up the main package. Let's move this over to the right side so it isn't so ugly. And we're, oh, that was the wrong icon. There we go. Move to right, all right. Okay, and so basically within the main package of this project, you're gonna see three packages, sub packages. So that's going to be data, logic, and view. So why do I mention that? When we're talking model view presenter, model view controller, model view view model, it's all at the higher level what we're saying is a class which sits in a particular package or a particular layer should be responsible for particular things and those three things, in my opinion, generally boil down to data, logic, and view. And I think this is true of basically all of the architectures that I've seen. There are little nuances that are different. So I wanted to just, for the beginners, introduce the very idea of what this thing is. So what I kind of mean is that um, when I open up any of these packages, or if I'm looking at a project which has a more dispersed structure, what I want you to think of if you're a beginner is any class which is de designated as, excuse me, model, view, or presenter must follow, must do, its implementation, which is the actual code, must reflect its responsibilities. And those three responsibilities are data, logic, and view. So let's just briefly go into them and then we'll get into the recycler view stuff because that's a little more interesting. Um, so for data, essentially what we're looking at is I want you to think databases uh, in model view presenter, it would be the model. In all of them, it, it will be model. So model, when you hear the word model, or in this case data, I've chosen to label it because I think that's a little better, but model is fine. Model classes are responsible for structured access, sorry, access and storage of structured data. 
they're concerned about data, storing it, giving it, um, but they don't think a lot. Anything in the model or data layer, the, I'll just, I'll use model view presenter from here on. Um, anything in the model layer should be basically dumb, it should be told what to do, and it should just, you know, um, either, let's say I'm the model, the presenter asks me, hey, get me this record. I either say, as the model, here's the record, or I say, here's an error. And it doesn't do a lot of like processing, so to speak. The presenter, and this is quite common, so in this project it's called a controller, but it, I the reason why I named it controller is I just want to get away from all the names in this particular project, but just think of presenter here. Um, so this presenter, not, uh, basically what it does is it talks to the other two layers, so it talks to the view, it talks to the model, it makes decisions, so when the view has an input, it makes a decision about that input. Maybe it needs to talk to the model. So the user clicks on a button. Oh, uh, this form, this uh, form was entered like a login form. Um, I'm going to take that data out of the form. This, I'm the presenter and I'm going to give it to the model. The model is going to send that to the network, blah, 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 things like that. So it's kind of like it has two things. It's a it's a middle person. So it talks to both layers. So communication and coordination. And it also makes logical decisions. Uh, generally speaking, it when we get into like uh, even more expansive architectures, I would say that presenters make logical decisions about the UI, and you would offload other things. But we won't get into that. Let's keep it simple today. And the last part of this equation is um, the view. So what is the view? I think we all pretty much know a view is generally going to be an activity, or it's going to be a fragment. Or it could be something else, it doesn't have to be. But a view is some class which is responsible for drawing and manipulating the UI. Uh, so we're thinking set text, for example. Now normally I wouldn't put a, normally I like to put my views as fragments and just use activities as containers. But again, this is the simplest implementation I could come up with for this particular tutorial. Um, so yeah. And what the view does is uh, it can listen for click events. Um, but instead of making a decision about an event, it's just going to take that event and be like, hey, presenter, uh, you know, someone clicked. And it's not going to think about that. So hopefully what I've done there is I've provided like a general overview of what model view presenter kind of is. or three layer architectures, model view controller, model view view model. At the end of the day, it's a separation of three responsibilities, more or less, and those responsibilities are drawing things on the screen view, making decisions and communication, logic slash presenter, and then data storage. I'm not trying to insult anyone with some hand signs. Um, I Just as a funny random tangent, it's funny how different cultures across the world, they have different hand signs, and I'm always terrified, like, to... To me, I'm just counting, but I think in some cultures that might be an insult. Um, and then Germans are really weird. They count with like the thumb first, whereas, yeah, anyways, I'm totally tangenting. But if, if you think I'm insulting you with hand signs ever, I'm not deliberately un unless I'm angry with you, which, yeah. Anyways, let's carry on. So yeah, data, data stores data, manages data. That's all I want you to think about. And the last thing we'll do is we'll run through a quick application flow. So what's going to happen for this particular code is that someone's going to click a list item. And I want you to note that in this first example, we have the adapter. Where is it? Wo bist du? Um, here we are. So I want you to see that we have this recycler view adapter class and it's nested within the view. So that's kind of like a quick and dirty way of solving this problem. But again, it kind of breaks separation of concerns to some degree. But I just want to show you. So basically how this thing works is um, we've got this view holder, which represents a single item in a recycler view. And we attach an on-click listener on, onto it. And when someone clicks an item, then we tell the presenter slash controller which item was quick clicked. And uh, we pass in V for some reason, I forget. And then that goes into the, the presenter slash controller. And the 
presenter slash controller, I'll just say presenter, makes a decision about this input. So that would be uh, on list item click. And then it kind of decides what to do from there. So in that case, it's just going to take the data and then pass it to the new activity. So I just wanted to kind of go through a quick application flow. So we're putting these random files and text into an actual thing you can think about. So view, uh, event happens in the view, goes to the presenter, presenter usually talks to the model, gives something back to the view. That's basically it. Now let's look at the code for uh, mon ami Darel. So um, as I say, I posted a link to the gist and uh, this is interesting. So there's gonna be a couple different things we're looking at here. So uh, first and foremost, this is Kotlin, whereas the previous example is in Java. Um, I am somewhat competent in Kotlin, but I'll be honest, there are a couple of things in here that I was not familiar with, but uh, we're going to kind of go over this and I'm gonna turn on, uh, so let's see here, let's do, we're gonna be kind of moving around quite a bit. So the first thing I wanna go over with this particular um, approach to sort of wiring up a view, a recycler view and the adapter is let's look at the different classes that we've got listed here. So we've got a contract uh, class called diffutil uh, presenter impl. So that's a way of saying implementation. So when we see this impl, basically what that means is this presenter is going to be known both through an interface. Again, I'm not insulting anyone with hand signs, an interface and also an implementation. So I'll try and talk about that. There's a lot going on here, which has to do with uh, data hiding and using sort of abstractions. So it, it's a very uh, interesting setup. But uh, I just want to say, when you see impl, that means an implementation class, so not an interface. Um, yeah, so anyways, uh, the first thing I want to do is let's look at this contract class. So what I'm going to try and do is dissect this code and we're going to talk about it and uh, what I would encourage you to do is look at it yourself. And also uh, Durel has some other amazing repositories on his GitHub. So you should go and check those out, seriously. Um, I'll, he, he's probably listening right now. He can uh, post the links or I'll post them in a moment, but uh, he has some absolutely amazing repositories. Anyways, so our contract, what is a contract file? What, what, what does this generally mean? So the thing about model view presenter is that you basically want your different layers talking to each other through an abstraction, an interface, something like that. Um, generally speaking in Java and Kotlin, you'll, you'll wanna use uh, interfaces, but you can also use an abstract class. When I say an abstraction, I really just mean not the file itself, not the implementation file, some other thing which sort of hides things like an interface. Uh, so in this case, this contract is essentially the source of truth for this model view presenter sort of component or cluster here. Uh, this, yeah, I'll say component. Um, so what, we're, what we have here is we have the contract for the view. So this is how the view is expected to behave and what it's expected to do and all that. And then a contract for the presenter in this case. So uh, yeah. Anyways, so the first thing I, I wanted to mention here is just if you want to kind of get an idea of what a model view presenter component does, look at the contract. It'll tell you basically what the different sort of expected behaviors uh, are from both sides. And this is also just a handy little way, um, instead of creating two separate classes, or sorry, two separate files, I would say, um, in both Kotlin and Java, you can just create one interface and then create two sub interfaces. And then to get a hold of that, it just, uh, we'll see an example in a minute, but it just, if I want to get the view, I say source contract dot I view. And it's just a handy way of laying that out. Next, we'll look at the adapter. So again, this is some pretty advanced code. Um, if you're uh, not familiar with Kotlin, and uh, lambdas and RxJava and stuff like that, but we're gonna get through this anyway. So uh, this was very fascinating to me. I'm just gonna pull up uh, something really quickly. Um, just give me one moment here. I'm just gonna pull up Slack because I, I figured that 
Degrel actually has some uh, notes for me to add here. <laughs> okay. Oh, wrong one. All right, let's get into it. So uh, this is interesting. Interesting. So we have our adapter class, and it gets past a list of source models. So what is a source model? Here we're just thinking some kind of object, like a, let's say in a shopping cart, it might be like a, a item. In a workout logging application, it might be a workout. In a note taking app, it might be a note. That's really what's going on here when we see source model. It gets past a list of models, which is quite normal for an adapter. Um, this uh, So this part was a little bit difficult because I don't have the rest of the application to sort of access, but I suspect this uh, subscribe to source sort of stuff. What's going on here is we're being sort of aware of the life cycle. And uh, so, for example, during on destroy within, um, say, the activity or fragment that this um, recycler view is contained within, Maybe you have some way through RxJav of letting this thing know to just release its resources, essentially. But uh, we're not going to go into that because A, I don't really have the rest of the source code in front of me, and B, uh, yeah. But that essentially, I'm, I think Daryl would say that that's sort of related to uh, that kind of thing. And uh, let's see here. So of course, this is quite similar to Java. We have our uh, adapter, and it's going to extend recyclerview.adapter and then we provide it with our own custom view holder, which we'll talk about in a minute. But essentially, you can think of this view holder as the view. Um, this presenter class is, of course, the presenter. We'll talk about diff util in a minute. And then uh, as far as I could sort of figure out, we can kind of think of this source, sources adapter as almost like a container for both presenters and views. Um, Degrel has a really interesting thing going on that I've never seen before. So if I'm not mistaken, what he's doing is, so he gets passed in this list of source models called sources. And then he creates a linked list of presenters. So a list of, let's just say a list of presenters based on uh, the list that is passed in. So I was trying to figure this out, but essentially, if I'm not mistaken, um, Durel has created a one-to-one -one ratio of presenters to models. Uh, data models in this case. I'm not saying model in the context of the whole architecture layer. Uh, so we'll kind of move on a little bit, but just an interesting approach here. Um, this is kind of the usual uh, recycler, some of the usual recycler view stuff going on here. So um, just a couple of thing, points to mention. So uh, Durel is using data binding. So in, in on create view holder, we're using the data binding util, which is of course kind of a API to create the uh, layout inflator. And basically what data binding does is it just kind of eliminates a lot of the boilerplate code, as we'll see in a minute. And let's look at on bind view holder. So this is where things get quite interesting. So in this case, we have, again, we've got our list of presenters. So we get the a presenter. Um, sorry, let me back up a little bit. So what on bind view holder does, if you're not familiar, is it basically binds the inflated view holder object, so the view. Um, sort of to the actual data. Uh, so it's it's where you bind the, um, yeah, essentially the data to the view. And this is done through um, sort of these methods here. So it looks super clean and efficient. So anyways, we get a presenter for a given view holder. And that'll the number of presenters and view holders is, of course, based on the list that was passed in. And then we assign things just, yeah, one-to-one uh, -one ratio and uh, so we give the holder a, a uh, presenter, and then we bind the presenter to the holder. And so what I want you to think of is each time, oops, each time on bind view holder is call, called, then we are creating, what the hell happened with, there we go. Um, yeah, that thing I said. So that's pretty much what's going on there. And then we have this, uh, the last method I'll talk about within the sources adapter is this update method. So this is also quite interesting. So we're, this method will be called with a new list of data. 
And so what Dorel has done is he's created this class called a source, uh, just a diff util. And so I had a quick look and basically what this thing does is it's going to compare the old list of data with the new list of data and it's going to sort of make, make a ju judgments as to how we need to redraw the uh, list on the screen. Uh, and then again, we've got some uh, intense lambdas going on and stuff like that. But um, basically what we do is, um, so you create, yeah, you create this calculation through the diff util. And then depending on how that works, you're either going to, um, let's see here. I, I'm not used to reading this uh, Kotlin. It's just so well condensed, but uh, yeah, I think, I think I've mainly covered everything we need to do here. Basically, this block here is responsible for updates to the recycler view. Um, and then we'll look at the presenter in the view holder and uh, just have a quick look. So each presenter is going to be given, of course, a model, which is, you know, the data that it's supposed to represent. And um, I just want you to look and see how sort of legible and simple uh, this the presenter implementation is when you've sort of separated everything out. So for example, um, let's see here. Just trying to remember. I had to go over a lot this morning, so. So what I want you to notice is that uh, this is our view holder object. Let's look, look at it now. Um, so basically this view is going to be capable of representing a series of different kind of view states, I would call them. And so those are going to be sort of denoted by these simple uh, methods. And so basically what's going to happen is, as appropriate, this presenter is going to coordinate the actions of the view, as you can see here. So it's going to bind to a particular view. And of course, it's talking to it through the contract. And then it's just going to call uh, the various sort of states of the view as appropriate. So for example, um, let's, let's uh, pick on a particular example here. Uh, display source on action, uh, what's a good example? Um, so in this case, we've got some uh, RxJava kind of magic going on here. And so how this kind of works is that when we um, execute one of these uh, I still, I'm not entirely sure what these unsubscribe to sources, I, I think they might even be use cases. But in this particular case, we're going to be using RxJava to manage the different states of the view. And uh, we're basically just telling it, we're calling the views methods and telling it to handle its shit appropriately, essentially. So I've kind of gone all, all over the place and really what I wanted to do there is just give you sort of an overview of the different uh, approaches that uh, Durrell has taken. So basically what he's done is he's like drastically decoupled everything. So whereas in my first approach with um, a recycler view adapter, I basically treated it like a part of the view. Like literally I slapped it in here. Whereas uh, Durrell has gone the extra step and he's taken an adapter and sort of split it into its own model view presenter uh, components for lack of a better word. And then he's also created a presenter for each individual view holder. So it's a super fascinating approach and uh, I just wanted to share it with everyone there. So um, if you're a more advanced developer and you're hanging out on the Slack channel and you have some other stuff that uh, you'd like to share that is of course your code and I do hope that it, basically if you want me to talk about something it will need to have an open source license so I don't get sued, which uh, of course Dekrell is very, very kindly provided. Uh, but yeah, if you'd like to me to uh, talk about some of your cool solutions or different approaches or things like that, then uh, hop on the Slack channel, mention it, and I might just uh, do that. And uh, one last time, if you would like to get a hold of Darrell, you can do so at the following links. So we've got uh, GitHub, Bitsy Darrell, his Twitter account right there. I'm just going to go ahead and slap those into the description box, and they will also be available in the show notes on the blog post. Oh, hold on. Added an extra slash there. There we go. All right. And let's, uh, I'm just going to run a quick commercial break.
and then we'll get into some Q&A. So um, I, I'm going to give you one warning, <laughs> a logo, stop spamming, spamming the chat. That's not how you get what you want. If you want me to answer your question, just answer, ask it once. And also, if you could ask a more specific question other than just show me the Recycler View Java code, that would be great. Do you have a specific question? And please stop spamming. <laughs> oh, they are use cases. OK, awesome. Oh, uh, James Anderson is asking, is there an ETA on the Kotlin version of my ebook? I would say the new year, roughly. Um, basically, where I'm at is I'm sort of writing my own applications and just sort of getting comfortable with Kotlin myself. And so I don't like to teach on a subject until I've been sort of working with it for a couple of months. But uh, yeah, uh, but I am steadfastly learning Kotlin. Uh, do we have any other questions here? Repository pattern. Well, someone asking if I could make a tutorial. Um, well, we got nine people watching. We got some beginners out here. Logo, if you if you want to, you know, do you have a question about the to-do list app? Um, Otherwise, I'm going to start co talking about my uh, RX Java experiences. Navigation drawer for Model View Presenter. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think, uh, okay, could I talk about uh, using MVP on a navigation drawer? Um, unfortunately, I don't really have code samples available for that. I'm just trying to think, uh, what's the last application I did with the navigation drawer? Um, I don't think I could give you a, a good answer on that quickly, just because the last time I looked at navigation drawer code was... Uh, quite a while ago. Um, I'll have a quick look at it and see if I can figure something out. Uh, navigation drawer. The main thing is like, the question is basically uh, implementing MVP with a navigation drawer. And generally speaking, um, let's see here. Yeah, I like. Here's the thing: I can't give you a, a an answer with code, and I'd basically just be babbling for five minutes. But uh... okay, that's that's an interesting question. I can totally get after that. All right, this is uh, as more of an, uh, I'm going to uh, call this kind of more of an opinion piece, so just be aware of that. But uh, this question is by Rustic Sam. So the question is, um, one thing uh, Sam, oops, one thing Sam doesn't like about MVP is that the presenter has multiple responsibilities, logic and synchronization between the uh, view model. Are there more pros to model view presenter instead of model view controller slash model view view model that you can think? Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to just, I'll give you my opinions on this and I'm just going to riff a little bit. So uh, take everything with a grain of salt. But so 
What I'll talk about is just my experience with Model View Presenter and Model View View Model. So um, I would say since the beginning of this year, uh, like 80% of the applications that I've written have been in Model View Presenter. Uh, I do quite like the pattern, um, but I did recently write an application with Model View View Model, and I did a lot of research into MVVM and uh, the pattern and how it works. And um, the there's a couple things about it. So the most important thing that I learned, uh, and this I think this will partly answer your question, is that model view view model is actually not a super well defined uh, pattern beyond one particular thing. Um, and this was really the only thing that I found was the primary defining characteristic of when I look at a code, is it model view view model? What I'm talking about, uh, do I have it open? Uh, let me pull it up in GitHub, otherwise it'll start lagging. Oh, what I'm talking about, this will be based on the Room Demo 2017 tutorial, the link's down below. I have a tutorial where I build a giant model view, view model application using Android architecture uh, components. Uh, let me just pull the source code up. So all I want to show you Where's the bloody presenter? All right. Uh. Okay. So uh, let's look at this. So this code comes from the uh, this repository here. And so I'm just looking at a random, I pulled up a random view model. So let me explain to you what the, what basically um, model view view model is. All I want you to notice is that this view model class doesn't depend on a view. That's it. It doesn't talk to the view directly. Whereas in model view presenter, I know this isn't news to all of you, but to some of you, whereas in model view presenter, if I go to a presenter or controller or whatever, it does talk to the view. It has a dependency on the view. What model view view model does is instead of talking directly, oops, talking directly to the view, um, it publishes, it updates, uh, uh, what's, um, it employs the observer pattern essentially. So the view observes the view model. Uh, I have a quick diagram I can pull up to clarify this a little bit. And why isn't Windows D working? There we go. Okay. Uh, just really quickly, here's my go-to MVVM architecture. So the only difference is that whereas Model View Presenter talks directly to the fragment, so this arrow would point right there, and then this thing would be called controller. Instead, the fragment observes in in the tutorial I built, it observed a live data representation or it observed live data, which the view model would update. So it doesn't depend directly. So anyways, the reason why I mentioned that is um, there's, there's been a lot of buzz about model view, view model. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, after building an application with it, what I would say is that there are no what it comes down to is you're going to find certain situations where model view presenter works a little better. You're going to find certain situations where model view view model works a little better. And what those situations are, are based on the project's requirements. Uh, so I'm just trying to think like, um, it's, yeah, it w it's difficult for me to think off the top of my head of like specific examples, but, uh, I don't know. Um, let's reread the question because I've already forgotten what it was. But um, here, here's the thing. Here's why I so I agree with you. So it is a little annoying that the logic and uh, synchronization need to happen with the view model. 
but here's the big problem with not talking to the view. Um, I ran into situations where, like, let's say, for example, we have complicated um, logic in the view. So, for example, maybe we're doing animations or we just have a very complex view hierarchy and there's a lot of things going on. So in Model View Presenter, um, I handle that by having the logic of the view contained within the presenter, which is easy for me to unit test and, and all that kind of fun stuff. Whereas in Model View View Model, depending on how you set it up, we've got a situation where um, the view model can't can't make any decisions about that and tell the uh, um, tell the view in that sense. So there's kind of only two things you can do from that point. I think if you were to do model view view model properly, the view would be capable of representing any potential state, uh, similar to uh, Durel's uh, view model. How it's basically in his case, his view is is just a, um, sorry, view holder uh, from the recycler view. Um, it basically contains methods to represent a series of different states. And so that would, re if you can represent each state with a single met method, that would reduce some of the logic within the view. But uh, what you're mentioning here uh, in closing uh, is very valid. And that was one of the issues I had with model view view model is that it, there are costs to not being able to directly tell the view what to do. Now, there are so many different ways of solving that. You could have a controller that the view model talks to, I believe. Um, we'd be departing from strictly MVVM, but I've seen a lot of people do that. They'll have a controller um, which coordinates the, uh, or a presenter or whatever, an outside class which kind of coordinates the view, the view, yeah, that kind of thing. but. Um, those are concerns, and uh, just in closing, my experience between model view presenter and model view view model is not that model view view model solves a whole bunch of problems that model view presenter has, or vice versa. There, it's a very subtle difference, and here's the key point. The key point is that whether whichever architecture you pick, for the most part, you're going to still need to satisfy the same responsibilities. So how you divide them can make slight changes, um, and there's ways to do it very poorly, of course. But my experience with model view view model was that, okay, here is another approach that has, you know, these limitations and these advantages. Uh, I can't give them all to you off the top of my head because to be perfectly honest, they didn't appear especially significant between the two patterns. Um, I won't talk about model view controller because I, it's not generally recommended for Android, but you know that is another approach. Hopefully, that rambling was somewhat useful. Uh, buenas tardes. We have someone from Chile. Oh, that's a difficult question. Um, so I will try and answer. Uh, we're getting into the more technical stuff here. So I just want the beginners to kind of prepare that what the question I'm about to answer is very technical. I'll do my best to sort of um, bring things down to earth. But what we're getting into, is this is the kind of stuff that PhDs and masters and uh, Jake Wharton probably would get into. But uh, the question is, do I like Apple? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm totally fucking with you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't mind Apple. Sorry, that, that was my attempt to be funny. Apple's fine, it's just I grew up, uh, I grew up with Windows and I don't like paying a ton of money 
and for those reasons, I primarily go with Android or Windows, but <clears throat> I would like to get into Linux soon. All right. Uh, okay. Um, oh, that's a wonderful question. Thank you. So I've got, uh, I've got two questions. Uh, that's a great, so what is context? Uh, let's do, I'll try and help with the recycler view thing first. So, uh, I'm trying to think, how do you, uh, if I remember, I don't know what it's like in Chile per se, but, uh, I believe your name is pronounced Gerald. I believe the G is somewhat like an H in Spanish, but anyways. So Gerald asks, uh, I'm just going to copy and paste this right in here. And you, no worries, you don't have to apologize about your English. Uh, English itself is a very complicated language. So, um, so how can you add items to a recycler view with a floating action button without any information? So I think what you're asking here, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Gerard, is that uh, so you're asking, how can you create a new item before the user? Uh, so you want to just create a new item immediately, add it right to the recycler view, and then have them edit it afterwards, I'm assuming. Uh, I'm just gonna go with that. Um, and what I would suggest, uh, let's look at the um, Recycler View tutorial. Um, so what this uh, link down in the description box, blah, 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 GitHub. Um, so basically what I do here is uh, within this code, when someone clicks the new item floating action button, I think I have this I'm almost thinking that you're referencing this app specifically. Uh, where is it? Cycler view. Uh, so it appears that you're trying to do what I do here. I would think. So this is my. This is the app I have open, uh, or the code I have open. Recycler view tutorial, and there's a. It's blurry, but there's a floating action button there, and when I push it. Oops. When I push the button, it adds a new item. It creates a new item on the bottom. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's what you're asking. And the answer to that question is pretty simple. So once someone uh, clicks the, uh, where is it? Not in the adapter. Where did I put it? Okay, so when someone clicks the floating action button, um, where's, so this thing must have viewed on, yeah, viewed on on click, sorry. The thing about code that I haven't looked at in a while is it takes me a minute to remember where things are. Okay, what the hell was that? Where is on click? There we go. Okay, so someone clicks that button like I showed you, and then it goes into the controller, then calls this method create new list item. And then what we do is we ask the, uh, in this case, I'm just asking a fake data source to create a new item, and then I'm adding it back to the view. So what I would suggest, just check out that code and hopefully that'll kind of answer your question. I think that's what you're trying to do. Um, okay. All right, so here's, uh, this is a really great question. Um, so this is by Yash. And the question, the question is, where is it? 
What is context? This is a excellent general Android question. I love questions like this because, uh, yeah, what the hell is context? Um, what is context? So um, the first thing I'm going to mention about context is let's consider which classes implement context. And I would also say, um, let's say, uh, what does the English word context mean? So outside of programming, what does the word context mean? Um, I would say it's a vague word, but sort of like the situation slash background of something. So for example, um, if I say a really, really mean thing to my brother, um, in that context, he would interpret it uh, as me just being his brother and insulting him and we communicate through insults. But if I say a really, really mean thing to an old, random old person I don't know, I would be a horrible person. So the context is the background of the situation, not, not the content. Content and context, I, I might say. Uh, so, yeah, the, that's a horrible definition, but just run with me. So the next thing I would say is which classes implement context? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pull up the documentation now. Um, one moment. This is a wonderful question, which I don't think get, got explained well at all. Uh, context, Android. So when we read context in the um, uh, documentation, essentially what it says, I'll just read the definition really quickly. Interface to global information about an application environment. Uh, it's, this is an abstract class whose implementation is provided by the Android system. It allows access to application-specific resources and classes, as well as call-ups for application-level operations, such as launching activities, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And uh, when we look at the... Um, uh, where is it? Correct. Which one relates to activity? Whatever, I'm, I'm not even going to reference. What I will just tell you straight up is that the main classes which implement context are application and activity. So why, why those classes? What makes them good candidates for context? So if you're not familiar, probably you beginners wouldn't be. The application class is responsible. Uh, let me, it, uh, you, a lot of you probably haven't seen this, so I'll just pull it up really quickly. So within POS Trainer, I'm going to open up the POS Trainer application class. As you can see here, this is just a class which extends application. So if, um, if a model view presenter or a, an architecture sits within an activity, and that's the context for it. The activities of an application, activity A, activity B, activity C, all sit within a big container, which is the application. The application class I'm talking about extends context. Activities also extend context. So, and what does context do? It provides access. It's basically like a huge class which provides you with system resources it provides you with a way in which you can interact with all kinds of things in the operating system. Uh, so let's think, like, what does context do? What can we create with context? So uh, I'm just going to say down here, get, can I say, got, I should be able to say get. Uh, yeah, so get application context. And if I just hit dot, look at the things it does. Uh, so services. Um, assets, colors, so resources I want you to think, fi finding file directories, um, there's, I could go on and on, system services are super important. Context is basically a giant sort of 
abstract class. So I'm trying to think. When a, when a class takes on the context, when it extends context, it basically becomes an access point for a giant number of resources. So hopefully that's kind of making sense. That's what a context object is. It's sort of a way to get a hold of a vast expanse of resources and different things available on the on Android operating system. There's more to it than that, but that's sort of the main responsibility. Now, what I will say, and this is something you beginners really need to listen to, is what do you think might be an issue with context? So we've got these classes, application or activity, and they're enormous. Like look up the documentation of activity, look up the documentation of application, look up context, and you will see that these different classes do an insanely large number of different things. They're huge. They have a giant resource footprint. So a lot of times as a beginner, you will hear people talk about not um, leaking context or be very, very um, careful with context. And what that means is that if you're passing something like an activity, or an application, even if it just says context, that's just an, an, an interface. If you pass one of these huge objects into a separate class, you better make damn sure that that separate class does not uh, hold on to that context object too long. You need to make sure it gets garbage collected properly. Otherwise, you'll have a situation where you might have some random crappy service class that holds reference to application or um, activity. And then that can cause your application to crash because of an out of memory error. So I just wanted to kind of mention that. But so the general question is like, you know, what is context? Um, what I would say is that when you're working, what you'll generally do with context is you'll create things. So if we're talking like a dagger two implementation, like in uh, pause trainer, my uh, application class is going to depend on this dagger two stuff. I won't go into the details there. And uh, what I do is actually pass application context into this object here. And this object I'm talking about, which is a, let's look at the module. Sorry, not that object. That's the component. Uh, this object here. What it does is it creates things. So as you can see, I pass this context in. And then this is how I create a wake lock, which wakes the phone up, an audio manager, which plays sounds, uh, or, uh, well, other, uh, I think that does like volume and crap of the system. Media player actually plays the sound. Um, a vibrator to vibrate the phone. And so all of these different things I'm creating with context. So basically, to, to wrap things up, context is generally like a huge background class that wants to be able to connect to a huge number of resources. And because of that, you have to be very careful where it goes. Um, as a general rule, don't pass context around unless you know what you're doing. So for example, in this case, I'm giving context to my Dagger 2 implementation. In this case, I know exactly where this sits. I know it's only depended on by this um, uh, application class, which will run during the duration of the uh, application's runtime, whereas activities only run during their life cycle. Then I'm not really worried about uh, memory leaks and things like that. But where you could go wrong, what I'll end on is, where you could go wrong potentially is, let's say you've got an activity and then you you pass like activity into some random class uh, as context, um, like a service class at the other end of your architecture, then you can run into situations where you have memory leaks. So anyways, I'll close off on there and we'll do maybe one more question. But hopefully that, is there anything I can expand on there? Because I, I tried to do a general overview of what context is, and I kind of went all over the place. It's a big concept is the main thing. All right, um, I'm just going to run a quick commercial break, and then we'll come back for one last question.
Ah, uh, yes, we have friends from Romania. Unfortunately, I don't know any Romanian, so I can't even say hello to you in your language, but welcome. All right. Um, so, let's see. So I've got a, a lot of stuff to go over here. I, I, I can only answer one more question, so I'm being a bit picky. Okay, I, I'll answer your question, uh, Gerard. Um, oh, you guys have like almost the same color of icon. It's confusing the hell out of me. Okay. Okay. How do you, so how do you store data on the phone? I get it. Uh, uh, thank you, Rustic Sam. Oh, uh, quick question by Catalan Warrior about my calculator. Um, I'm actually building a new uh, Kotlin calculator, and it'll have a totally new library, and it'll be able to handle multiple operators for the uh, calculator. So um, the older one was built probably a year and a half ago, so it, it did have issues like that. But watch out for the new one. Okay, um, so what I'll, uh, so the question, um, there's a couple things going on here, but uh, here's basically what the question is. Um, and, oh, I, what's the name, what's the name? Alan, 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 I don't know how to pronounce your name, but uh, all in. So Alan from Romania, I don't actually know if Romanians roll their R's, so that's probably a horrible impression. So uh, the general question he's asking is, um, how do I store data in the phone? He specifies, uh, I'm assuming he, uh, strings and ints. How do you store data in the phone to use later. Um, so here's here's basically the answer to that. So for simple things like user settings that don't change much, or just or just very small amounts of data, very small things like just preferences, settings, for simple things like user settings, blah, blah, blah. Use uh, shared, shared preferences. So how shared preferences, it's an API, you can look it up. And how it basically works is it allows you to store things as key slash value pairs. So for example, if I were to, um, let me, do I have something that, I don't really use shared preferences a whole lot because I use databases. Um, I'm just trying to think, do I have an app which uses shared preferences? Uh, give me one moment here. Uh, okay. I'll just pull up a quick example. Where the bloody hell is it? Okay, app. And now I gotta figure out which friggin' part uses shared preferences. Uh, probably in settings.
Please tell me you share preferences here. Yes. Okay, here we go. All right, so, so for the first answer, uh, so number one, if you're storing really simple data, you're going to use shared preferences. And how shared preferences works is you use uh, basically these, you use key value pairs. So what is a key? Um, where's my, ah. I have so many windows open, it's hard to fiddle with this. So, uh, so a key, a, a static and unique string and the value is just what you want to store like an int for example and what the uh, really quickly what the API actually looks like is where did my code go uh, if I scroll down here so you basically get a, a hold of um, I, where did this thing uh, get created uh, this is old, really old code, by the way, so don't expect much from it. But um, and it's been a while since I looked at it. Okay, um, yeah. Just in a nutshell, when you want to edit shared preferences, then you um, you you say get where where does it it has to say get shared preferences somewhere, and I'm just missing this. Oh, I guess I here's the thing. I haven't looked at this code in like two years. Uh, okay, so it, whatever this thing gets passed to shared preferences object, I forget who gives it to this thing. Here we go. Okay, sorry about that. So uh, this is how you cr one way to create shared preferences. So you just say preference manager get default. This will get you a default shared preferences file, or you can name them and have multiple ones. And then I've registered a listener, and this is the listener for the shared preferences. And really, really quickly, uh, so we will create a key, which is sort of the um, the index, the, the address, the name that you use. And then you give it a value, which in this case is a string, but that can be an integer. So shared preferences is good for very simple uh, persistence, simple data storage. If you're accessing it a lot, um, you're probably going to want to use a database. So the, what I'll talk about next really briefly is uh, a database solution. And I just opened Spotify accidentally. Um, there's lots of different database solutions, but um, what's a quick example? So POS Trainer is an application and it stores a list of alarms, a list of reminders. And for that, even though it only stores four item, five items at a time, I've still gone through the trouble of setting up a Realm database for it. And if you want to see what that looks like, you can hop on the POS Trainer repository and go to the data uh, package. And within there, you'll see alarm database. And this is another, so this would be a solution if you want to store more complex data. So in this case, I'm storing objects. And uh, I would say if you're storing objects, like anything other than just primitive data, um, you probably don't want to be using shared preferences. You should probably set up a database. So hopefully that kind of answers. I'm trying to just give you a starting point to go on because I, I can't teach you a whole database implementation in a couple minutes, but um, Realm is a good choice, Room is a good choice, and that's basically how you save data. Uh, so to close that question out in the text, in my notes here, um, uh, so shared preferences is useful for primitives and stuff that changes some sometimes. So like preferences is the main example. Um, for, for complex data, you'll want to use a database. And there's two main solutions for that at the moment, which is going to be either Realm, which is a um, an object-oriented database, an object, whatever. I forget the name. It's a NoSQL database. Or you want to use Room. Oh, excuse me. I have a hiccup stuck or something like that. And Room. All right. So 
hopefully that answers your question. Let's see really quick. Thank you, uh, Elise. Awesome. Looks like I did actually answer that question appropriately. Uh, Alan, if you have more questions about databases, like maybe next episode you want to say, hey, take me through your uh, realm or room implementation, I'd be happy to do that for you. So anyways, uh, I love those questions. I like the general questions like, what is context? How do I store data? Because then it, it's an open-ended question and I can kind of approach it from different ways. But um, those are always my favorite kinds of questions. So uh, that's all for now. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so yet, please do me a favor and hit the like button down below if you like what I do. Um, I will be doing timestamps again. I know for the past couple episodes, I haven't bothered to do them. I've been really busy, but we're going to work on uh, improving WiseAss over the next two months. And I tell you, I am excited for the new year because on the new year, we've got, a, we've got some big stuff planned. But uh, lots of tutorials coming up. And uh, yeah, that's everything for now. Peace out.